Good morning from Grace Center Houston. Um, we welcome you this morning. We are going to begin our worship. Uh, we are on song eight. Christ is enough. Great is our God. I think we did it on two. Time is in 
song 62. My King Forever. No.
in song 69. No, I don't think so. through the haunting fear of death were held in bondage throughout the whole course of their lives. And so I was just thinking today, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk according to the word, not according to the wisdom of this world, not according to our experiences that we may even be in in the present time, circumstances, but we walk according to what God's word says and Colossians 1 13 says you have been translated moved out of the kingdom and dominion of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son 
So darkness has no authority and power over you anymore Amen. because Jesus has set you free. And so I just encourage you today, no matter how you feel, no matter what you see, to receive the word of Jesus that says that he delivered you, set you free, the chains are gone, right? Yeah, amen. amen. And you are no longer held in bondage. Amen. And sometimes you feel like you're in bondage, but you are not trapped. You are not bound. There was a there was a trap door, and you came through it. <laughs> yes. And you you're free in Christ today. I so we we agree with God's word, and yes. we say we are free. Amen. Even if you feel a symptom of fear, or you're in a circumstance where you feel trapped, continue to speak God's word. He has delivered me. You know, I was in bondage all my lifetime. I was a slave to that, but not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. Amen. And we walk according to the Word of God. And we say it's not according to what we've done, but according to what He did. Yeah. And you are no longer a prisoner. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who works in you. It's God who works in you, both to do and, and to bring about the pleasure of His good will. So don't be afraid, because it's God who works in us. We don't work in us. It's God who works in you, Hallelujah. both to do and to will His good pleasure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to put this into words because I know the thoughts in my head, but it's like getting up every morning and making that decision, no matter what you're going through, making that decision. Because I told Paul the other day, but I have a decision how I want to act today or how I want to be today. And if I want to give in to those thoughts that are not my own or the thought of, no, you have the choice to put a smile on your face and walk in joy and in his joy instead of walking in what you are feeling at the moment. Right. And that um, walking out, Melinda had said something to me one day or at the beginning of the year, and she told me that she said, he's unlocked the door, you've walked out of it. Stop walking back into it. Yeah. But it's a daily choice to stay outside of that door and just and know that and believe the word and believe what he is saying yeah. because just like Eric was saying too, it's remember your belovedness. Remember who you get or whose beloved you are, Hallelujah. and not um, not the things that are going on around you. Or yeah. um, and we're tempted to walk by our feelings, but the word says we walk by faith, right? And not by sight. And even the circumstances around us at times we do we do you know find ourselves reacting to that, but in reality. The things that are invisible are greater than right. the things that are visible, and that's our truth. And I think that being yeah. comfortable in that for so long, being just comfortable in that misery, that believing that there is just peace beyond that yeah. is so scary sometimes. Yeah. And so, but... And when you believe right, you live right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what you believe is everything. Yeah. 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 You ready? We have decided to follow Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. No turning okay. back. Yep. What we believe is everything. It is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Your homework assignment was your read. Psalm 61 and 62. And I read it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Right? What? I got some things. I don't know if y'all. I guess it's because of the 
the, yes, yes. Yeah, amen. You're a paradise of protection. Well, yeah. I'm held firmly in your wraparound presence. Yeah, amen. Let me live continually under your splendor shadow. <laughs> He is my champion defender. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tell, tell him, I mean, tell him all your troubles and pour out your heart longings to him. All the love you need is found in me. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a word of encouragement. Yeah, I'm, I mean, and that's. That was my desire for, you know, if you re repeatedly read something like every day, mm -hmm. it starts your spirit. See, that's the truth and your spirit knows that, but he's trying to get it. He's trying to get the, like everybody was saying this morning, he's trying to trade that attack. Everything in this, in the, in the super book <laughs> is, can be boiled down to those last two those last two verses in that chapter there. All the strength and power that we need flows from Him, and all the love that we ever need is found in Him. So if we're in Him, we have all, we have, and that's really, that's, that's the, that's the, the uh, result of, the, of what Jesus has done for us in His redemptive work, is to bring us to the reality of that. And David, David's with us one more time this morning, but. Um, David, uh, the beloved. You when you begin when you know you're his beloved, then you begin to 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 believe not what you're trying to believe that may not may or may not be true, but what is already true. Um, and that's what. And so the the enemies, the the complete uh, manifest of the the enemy's desire and work is to is to bring, and that's another part of that. I really love that verse where it says um, um, in the last verse of the prior chapter. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Let's see. Uh, um, uh, the f chapter, uh, chapter 62. Uh, Uh, verse four. See the the work of the enemy is to lie there, the, and 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 all their energy, all the energy of the enemy, is to move us from the exalted place that we are. I love. I put this chart back up that that uh, we had that uh, was made here for for our uh, to really get a better gri grip on this. Sharon worked really hard on putting this together. But this third realm, where it's finished, where everything is perfected forever, that's our, that's our dwelling place forever. And the enemy does not want us to live there. He wants to pull us down. So that's why it's so important to know the truth, uh, because the truth is what makes us free. And we're, we're celebrating, this is Fourth of July weekend, and I, I know, uh, I'm glad to see everybody this morning. I know it's a, we're celebrating a freedom in this country that's not that wasn't free it was very expensive and and i love the fact that now we have a uh, an example uh, of that spiritually speaking we have we're, we're we're in complete freedom because of the cross but it wasn't free was it and that's what we want that's what we want to talk about a little bit this morning thank you tom i appreciate it uh tom is kind of like ef hutton when he talks you know <laughs> Want to listen? Yes, come uh, in. Uh, sorry. Well, uh, the night before Tom said that, I was going to say something. It's the same thing. It's so cool because I, try, I pretty much did it every day, like our homework. <laughs> pretty much. I like the way you said that. No. <laughs> Paul knows what we're talking about. I pretty much did the homework. No, I'm just <laughs> But 61 and 62 that she pointed out to us, what stood out to me, too, was he said the phrase, in your reverend presence, I know that's what you did for Connie, too. And, and there, it's mentioned four times in those two yes. chapters. And each time there's something firm, something that it 
cause this to happen. None of my foes can touch me. Yeah. Because I'm firmly held in wraparound presence. And, and in 62, it says, He alone is my safe place. That protects me. That presence. And then chapter 62, the safe place. He also, oh, it repeats that He protects me. His presence is all in me. He is my life giving strength. Yes. And that's what stood out so much to me is that particular phrase is just to focus on that. Right yes. Now as I'm sitting here, there is a presence that is solid, that is so powerful. Amen. We really can't walk out from under. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Dr. Skidmore, this is very short. I, I guess I was halfway raised on a farm. And I believe we didn't have my yard and couldn't weeds. I love to have my yard clean. Yep. And as I was pulling those weeds, I prayed. I even prayed and then I couldn't weeds. So uh, let me get this straight. It was very short and I heard like God saying in his spirit. I am his garden, and if I stay in his work, my spirit, my my spirit will stay clean. I don't know how to express this one, but when you pull weeds out. It's clean, and if we stay in God's word and believe this word, we cannot have but have our spirit and our body clean. Amen. Amen. Well, and I will. I'll, I'll add just one more thing. One thing to that is that you're, and we'll see that in the next chapter when Jesus washes the disciples' feet. Uh, is that you know they? He said that you're, he, he told us you're already clean. Your spirit is perfected forever by one sacrifice. So the, what's, what the Holy Spirit wants to do is pull the weeds out, of the, which, is the, which is the misinformation, the lies, the, de the, the deceits of the enemy to try to, to try to confuse the truth based upon experience or what's happening or what's not happening. You know, what y'all said about we walk by faith, not by sight. That doesn't, that's not just an empty phrase. Uh, the sight will change if we're walking by faith. So it doesn't leave the sight the same. That's what, that's what the, the, it's not about just whatever, whatever the sight is is going to stay the sight. No, when you're, when you're walking in the, the, the conviction of truth based upon what Jesus has done, then what you see will change too. But it's not because we make it happen. It's because the Holy Spirit makes it happen as we focus on Him and not ourselves. And uh, so there is a, there, there's a reality there, but that's good. I, I, I love that, that weed analogy because that's a good way. He's trying to sow tares in the midst of the wheat. Um, and, uh, he, and that's what I say, that, that we have to be mindful of his tactics um, because he will try to convince us to go back to working instead of resting. Uh, and when we, go, but when, we, when we rest, he works. And when we work, he rests. Uh, he can't do. He can't. He can't really do what he needs to do if we're if we're trying to do it ourselves. And so, uh, thank y'all for sharing that um, all that this morning. I love it when um, when the the these things start enriching us. You know, the truths begin to set. There's a freedom in that. There's a, there's there's such a freedom in it. Um, anybody else before we get? further along, get into the message a little more. Thank you, Ann and Tom and Renata and Deborah and everybody this morning for sharing and prophesying. Uh, amen. Uh, can I give you homework? Sure. Okay. Um, next, for, for next week, read Ephesians um, 1 verses, the first uh, 14 verses. Ephesians 1, 1 through 14, that's the will of the Father, the work of the Son, and the witness of the Spirit. Everything that Tom was saying, everything that was shared out of, out of Psalm 62 
the Holy Spirit is continually convicting us of that reality, continually. Uh, and the witness of the Spirit, those three. And then uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, that takes us from what we were, that we no longer are, to what we are now and forever. Amen. Chapter, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. See, it, you have to know where you come from uh, to know where you are and where you're, that you're forever in that position. We were, like Deborah said this morning, we were locked into a destructive uh, prison that Jesus came and took the keys away from the enemy, unlocked the, the prison door, set us completely free, and that freedom is, is ours forever. The enemy wants to put us back, and the door is, is open, as we were, uh, other words that came forth this morning from Tina. And so, that don't go back through that, don't let the enemy take you back into that that jail cell. This is not Andy Griffith. You know, Barney's always locking him in himself in the jail cell. Uh, we tend to be the ones that want to lock ourselves in there when, when they get the, the door is completely open and we have the keys uh, to stay out. Okay, well, let, the message title this morning is uh, His Demonstrated Love. And uh, again, I want to just reiterate that the, from the week before that, uh, we, we talked about y'all are a chosen generation. We are set, we are set in place um, for this particular time. Uh, Psalms 22, uh, verse 31 says, We are His generation. His generation, Psalm 22, verse 31. Uh, and that generation that He calls His generation is the one that's going to declare it is finished. And I've never seen, I've never lived in a generation or, I've, or heard of a generation that is walking uh, in, in uh, co you know, collaboration with that, that prophetic word concerning Psalm tw chapter 22, verse, uh, verse 31, where we all declare uh, it is finished. That's, that's going to be the sign of his generation that, 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 he's, that, that has been raised up for this time to declare the truth of the, of the gospel. Amen? Amen? Now, uh, I want to start um, in... Uh, oh, and one more, one more. Can I add one more thing to the homework? Uh, Colossians 3. Colossians 3, 1 through 4. And that's, that's uh, our eternal perspective in reality is, is Colossians 3, 1 through 4. Uh, we may turn to that if we have time here. We may turn to that and look at it. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it in more, more detail next week uh, because y'all it'll, it'll be, your, your hearts will be enriched in it. And then it, and then it just takes root in you when, you when you're looking at it and looking at it and then we declare it, prophesy it, minister the word. Uh, it, it confirms that. Amen. Uh, okay, let's turn. Let's turn to Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight. I'm, a, I'm just, I mean, these, sometimes things start going off inside me and I'm trying to say, well, you know, am I supposed to go this way or that way? And I kind of wait for the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, but I, just, I, think he, I think the Holy Spirit is really, is really uh, doing something in our, in our hearts. I think He's really trying to, to firm up and, and, and quiet us and comfort us in the reality, uh, the, the reality of the, the gospel um, and I, I say that particularly related to, to Colossians 3, the first four verses. So you'll, you'll see that a little more. Um, but it, 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 what I want to talk about a little bit this morning is uh, in verse 37 of Romans chapter 8, we could spend, and I've said this 20 times, but we could spend the rest of our lives prior to, to the end of the, this age, this chosen generation we're in, 
uh, ministering out of uh, uh, Romans chapter 8 because the Holy Spirit is actually ministered or, or talked about 17 times in this one chapter. And uh, so there's so much uh, in this. But uh, what I want to talk about uh, in... Uh, if you start with verse 35, there, you'll start seeing some labels about love. It's an endless love. It's a love. It's a, it, 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 there's no power in the universe that's, that's able to diminish it, to change it. It doesn't, care what, what, doesn't matter what troubles or pressures or problems. Um, nothing can, can come between us and heaven's love. Uh, and, then, and then he goes on to say... Uh, um, in verse 37, this is where I want you to see. Yet even in the midst of all these things, all these things that want to, like Deborah was saying, that, that want us to walk by sight, um, um, we triumph over them all, for God has made us to be more than conquerors. What, what is more than a conqueror? Anybody want to? Yes, he earned the benefits and he's given them to us for free. So that makes us, just like I've used the illustration about the prize fighter, he gets in the ring and he wins the $8 million check and he takes it home to his wife. He's a conqueror, but she's more than a conqueror, right? And that's, we are the bride of Christ, so we're enjoying. But what I want you to see is this, God, uh, more than conquerors and his demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. So what is His demonstrated love? The cross. The cross, the cross you know, God could say, we could see in words, we could see in uh, the Bible from cover to cover, we could read things about God making, a sta making statements. You know, God is love. God will always and forever love us. God is... But when you use this this uh, this term and you see it for what it really is uh, when you see that how he demonstrated his love then that makes it a reality uh, because Jesus was hanging between heaven and earth confirming the father's desire confirming that it that it was requiring his work on the cross and now the Holy Spirit is making it real to us because it's demonstrated his demonstrated love is what gives us the victory right it's the cross that's the hinge of history. Everything changes. We're going to see that in John chapter 12. We're going to go there in just a second. Uh, this, is the, this was the final step in God's plan uh, and, and the final step in Jesus' work. And now it's the Holy Spirit convicting us of that truth. Uh, now, let's go to... Uh, uh, John chapter 12. John chapter 12 is a transition. Uh, we're going to finish this up today. Hopefully, we'll get through this. Everybody say amen. <laughs> no? We'll finish it when we finish it, right? Okay. But this is a... Uh, this is an interesting chapter, and, and specifically because it relates to, to us as Gentiles. But also, this is the, the last public message that Jesus preaches. This message in John chapter, this is the last time uh, that he uh, preaches publicly. Uh, everything else from this point on is him walking into his last week of life, uh, in, in the passion of becoming God's sacrifice. Amen? Y'all see that? So that's what we want to we wanna take to, uh, just a little bit of time here in John chapter 12. We've talked about, uh, I'm not going to preach on this, about the anointing Mary, uh, Mary anoints Jesus for his burial. Uh, we, talked, we did a whole lesson on this expensive nard, the, the, the fragrance that, that she anointed him with that was so, so strong um, uh, I believe that it's what God instructed in the Old Testament for the, the, the fragrance that he wanted to smell was this same fragrance because it's the fragrance of Christ. And we are his fragrance today. But when he was put on the cross, those ones that were nailing his, hands, his feet...
to the cross were smelling this, this, this fragrance. Uh, which was an indication of his demonstrated love even to them as they were nailing him to the cross. But I want you to see uh, that in verse 16 um, that Jesus' uh, disciples didn't fully understand the importance of what was taking place. Uh, but after he was raised and exalted into glory, they, they understood how Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies in the scriptures that were written about him. And that's, uh, if you want to look at a reference to that, Emmaus, the Emmaus walk of Luke 24, Luke chapter 24, uh, is, is, the, is further uh, evidence of the fact that Jesus actually took all of those things in the scriptures and began to reveal them to the, the, that couple on the road to Emmaus. So, uh, as we said last week, it's impossible for us to understand the scripture, in, uh, the, the truth of the scripture without what? without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that, uh, that Jesus said, and I'm saying that because Jesus said it, He's the one that will lead us into all truth. And J Jesus often said, hey, I got a lot more I want to tell you, but I can't tell you. Because it, when the Spirit of truth comes, then you will be able to receive the revelation and it'll make sense to you. So that, that is what He's talking about. And so... Um, the, the, of course, the, the religious people of the day in verse 14, or verse 20, uh, I'm sorry, 19. Uh, is, it, is it cold up here when y'all are playing? No. Okay. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's blowing right on me here, so. That's uh, no, all right, Mark. It's okay. Yeah, yeah it's okay. It feel, actually feels pretty good because I know there's a lot of hot air coming out this way. So, uh, the whole world, uh, they were concerned that the whole world is going to run after him. What a terrible thing that, 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 uh, for, the, for everybody to, to run after Jesus. Uh, then, it, then, it, then he begins to talk about, this is where the, the, the em emphasis is on, the, on this chapter today. What's the title, Tina, over verse 20? True Seekers. True Seekers. Everybody see that? Uh, there were a number, of, it says in verse 20, uh, 20, there were a number of foreigners, the, the uh, New King James Version says Greeks, which are Gentiles, who were, who were worshipers at the feast. They, were, they had recognized that this, this was the God, the true God, and they were trying to enter into what was a covenant relationship between the, the Israel and, and God. Um, and so... They, they, come, they, they went to Philip, um, and then, um, so Philip, and then Philip found Andrew, his brother, and then they both came to Jesus and said, uh, the, the Greeks, the two Greeks said, we want to see him. We want to see him. And who were they saying? Who was the him? Jesus. We, we want to see Jesus. And so uh, they, Andrew and Philip went to, to inform Jesus. And he replied to them, nothing. <laughs> no response. But what I want you to see here is that this is the, uh, there's two reasons, the, the two ministries that Jesus came. One was to the Jewish people. Remember what uh, Romans chapter 1, um, I believe it's verse 16, uh, says that, that Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first, right? Uh -huh. And then to the Greeks. He said, for in it, the righteousness of God, which is apart from works, is revealed from faith to faith. Amen? That's Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. So the gospel is the power of God because it gives us a righteousness we could never attain to. It gives it to us based upon the work of Jesus on our behalf. He became the sin offering that allowed us I'm, giving, I'm throwing a lot of verses at you because they're coming through my head. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So that was the exchange. Our sin for His righteousness. What a deal. I say take the deal. Take the deal. Uh, so uh, if, you, if we go back to John chapter 3, uh, the Jew first and also the Greek. So Nicodemus came to Jesus thinking that he was coming to a man that was going to give him more insight in the law, more insight so he could live, learn how to live a better life. That's what Nicodemus thought. And so when Nicodemus asked him about that, calling him teacher, 
how did Jesus respond? You got to you got to be born again. What did he say to him? As Moses in John three fourteen, he says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross, that everyone that would believe in him would have eternal life. Amen. So that was what for what what uh, Nicodemus wanted, which was insight. See, he was he was standing in front of the living Torah. Not the Torah that was written on a page, but the living Torah. Uh, and he was seeking an answer to his religious system of effort toward becoming better, a better person. And Jesus responded to him, uh, you must be born again, and I'm going to be lifted up. So he, it, 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 and then what was what was Peter? I mean, what was Nicodemus's response? I don't understand. How do we do that? How do we do that? So, um, but so that's that was that's how he dealt with Nicodemus. Now, now we're fast forwarding to chapter twelve. Now here he's going to deal with the same thing. Uh, only now it's the Gentiles, the Jew first, and also to the Greeks. So the Greeks wanted to see him, but. They wanted to see him so that they get, could get something from him as a man. They just wanted to receive something from him as a man. They knew they heard about all of his works and all that he was doing. So they were looking from the natural realm to just to receive something from him. But that's not what, that, so he didn't answer their, that he didn't give them what they desired in this moment. But what, what did he give them? Let's, let's look and see. He replied to them, which was to, to Philip and Andrew, Now is the time for the Son of Man to be glorified. Let me make this clear. A single grain of wheat will never be more than a single grain of wheat unless it drops into the ground and dies. Who is he talking about? Jesus. Himself. Yeah. He was the grain of wheat and he was perfect and... He was the truth and was a whole truth and nothing but the truth and will always be the truth. But grace, the grace and truth was dependent upon him falling into the ground and dying. Uh, and what and, and just keep in mind as we read this, what he wanted, the, 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 how he wanted to answer the question of these two Greeks was the same way he wanted to answer Nicodemus, to show him what he wanted them to see, not him as a man, but see him as the sacrifice. Y'all see what I'm saying here? And I'll show you an illustration of it in, in Genesis 40 here in just a minute. Okay, y'all with me? Yes. Uh, it, if, it, if that falls into the ground, because it sprouts and produces a great harvest of wheat, all because one grain died. So he's bringing many sons to glory, which is the harvest of that of himself being planted in the ground and dying. And y'all see that? That's what he's talking about. That's what he wants the two Greeks to see about him. Don't be coming to me just as a man because I'm far more than a man. I'm here to give you eternal life. Okay? So the person who loves his life and pampers himself will miss true life, but the one who detaches his life from this world, and I'm saying this world system is what he's talking about. We can't, we can't you know, there's so many examples of this. Uh, Abraham was one of them. He he, he knew that there was a city whose maker and builder, builder and maker was God. He was dwelling. Anybody in here a resident alien? Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about is that we're detached in the sense that we don't seek the fulfillment of the world system to satisfy us. We know who we are in Christ and we know what our inheritance and we know our identity. Amen? The two eyes. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, abandons himself and uh, will find true life and enjoy it forever. So if you make that recognition that Abraham recognized and many, many others, uh, then you'll see that then true life begins in that, in that, at that moment. If the whole world is running after satisfaction from the world system, most of the world. I mean, is that pretty evident? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't care how many World Series the Astros win, it's still not going to satisfy them or satisfy the people that are, that are seeking to be satisfied by that, you know, jumping and running down the street and screaming about their parade. You know, the next day they're right back at square one again. Okay, 
So that's what he's saying. Look at, and look at the promise there. And if you truly follow me as my disciple, the Father will shower his favor upon your life. So do you, do you want the favor of man or do you want the favor of God? Don't seek it. Don't seek life from, from the world system. Seek it from the life above where we have, where we're seated with him. And we're going to see more about that in just a minute. Okay. Uh, even though I am I'm torn within, my soul is in turmoil. I will not ask the Father to rescue me from this hour of trial. For I have come to fulfill my purpose. What was his purpose? He says it right after that. To offer myself to God for who? For us. So, Father, bring glory to your name. Then suddenly a booming voice was heard from the sky. I have glorified my name, and I will glorify it through you again. And then the, aud the audible voice startled the crowd, and Jesus told them, The voice you heard was not for my benefit, but for yours. What, which one was for his benefit? You know, he said this before. When did, when did, he, when did God say this before? When, when Jesus was baptized. Because where was he headed from there? In the wilderness to be what? Tempted. And so he needed to know his identity. It was his father's beloved. Amen? But now it's for our sakes because now he, he's going to take our place as his offering. Everybody with me? From, this is what I want you to see. From, from God's putting the brakes on the world system. I'm listening to the Santa. Perfect timing. Illustrated. The illustrated sermon. I, I, I told him to please do that, and I told him, well, you know. Uh, but uh, it's, it, really, it really is a perfect setup right, for what, because Jesus says, that's too funny. Couldn't, I mean, this, 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 that was perfect. I'm going to I'm have to tell him afterwards that, what a great job they did. They, were, they must have been hearing the, the Holy Spirit. They were, they were moved by the Holy Spirit. From this moment on, everything in this world is about to change. For the ruler of this dark world will be overthrown. And I will do this when I'm lifted up off the ground and when I draw the hearts of the people to gather them to me. Uh, I love the, the New King James Version of this verse where it says that he draws all judgment to himself. Uh, and that's how he really draws us to himself is the fact that he was drawing all the judgment we deserved, all of what we deserved to give us everything that, that, he, that, that he wanted to give us that we didn't deserve, which is by his grace. Uh, Y'all with me? So uh, he, said he, he said this to indicate that he would die by being lifted up on a cross. Uh, Okay, I want, to, I want to stop there for, for just a minute. The, the, there's a footnote there that, that actually says that the, world, the, dark, the ruler of this world is going to be driven into exile. He's not completely removed yet, but he's exiled to a, a, a position with no power over humanity. No longer any power to, you know, before the cross he could even say, uh, Jesus said to Peter, uh, you know, Satan has, has demanded to sift you like, that he wants to sift you like wheat. Why could he say that to Jesus? Because mankind was still under the condemnation and the fall. And they were under, they, they had committed treason through Adam and were under the dominion, like Deborah was prophesying, she didn't know what I was going to preach today, but prophesying about the dominion that all of mankind was under. All of their lifetime afraid of death because death brought a permanent end to them, to them because of the fall, because of the power of, of uh, the uh, authority that, that... Remember when Jesus was being tempted by the devil? He said, if you bow down to me, I'll give it all, I'll give it all to you because it's all mine. And Jesus knew it was all his at the moment. But he also said, he doesn't have anything in me. Thank God he never did and he never will and, and for our sakes. Uh, that, was the, that was the transition that we're reading about right here. Y'all got, y'all with me? Okay. Uh, now, um, verse, uh, let's go. Um, do I want to go there first or? 
So this moment was the hinge of history. This, this is the, in fact, there's a footnote that says that right there. Uh, the time of judging the world system had come, and Jesus was judging the world system by doing what? Being judged in our place. Amen? Amen. The innocent was being found guilty so that the guilty could be found innocent. Again, I'd say take the deal. Uh, take the deal. Uh, now, uh, now we're going we're gonna to come back. I, I want to go, uh, let's see. Let's go, uh, okay, Lord, help me. Where do you, Holy Spirit, where do you want to go first? All right, let's, 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 uh, let's stop and, and we'll come back and finish this chapter uh, uh, after we go to Genesis chapter 40. I have never, I've never heard this before. Uh, Thursday, you know, in, in my heart, I've never heard this before. Um, I never understood about the, the two people that came and wanted to see him and being ignored. I never understood that. And I never understood, so I never understood until, I put, until the Holy Spirit put the two and two together that he, was, he dealt with the Jews and he's dealing with the Gentiles with the same response. It's my, it's my life being given to you that's going to give you life. Now, right, y'all see that? So uh, there's an illustrated story about that in, in Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 40, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 40. Whatever I put in the notes. I never understood this story either. Uh, and this, this story will tie back to the end of John chapter 12, okay? So we're not leaving that hanging there. I just want to give you a little background. Uh, Joseph is a type and shadow of who? Jesus. Jesus. He was the beloved of his father. Remember the coat of many colors. Uh, he was sold out by his brothers. Right? Put in a pit. Sold into slavery, into bondage. For them, they didn't know it at the time, it was, but it was for them that was happening. Just like Jesus went into, came down and, and, and had to enter into this world for us. So, uh, he get, he, and then... He gets accused, Joseph gets accused of doing something he didn't do. So he was put in prison uh, for something he didn't do, not something he did do. Um, so should, should I say that? No, I don't want to say that. But it's, it's, uh, this, is, this, this is the same illustration if you looked at the two thieves on the cross. This is a, this is a repeat of the two thieves on the cross. They both, he was hanging there for both of them. One of them, one of them realized it and acknowledged and said, this, guy, this man has done nothing to deserve being on this cross. What about the two that were hanging there with him? Had they done something to deserve being there? Yes. yes. That was the, that's the gospel message, is that he was, doing, he was hanging there for, that, for our benefit. Uh, and that's the distinction between these two groups of people that he illustrates in this, this chapter. It's a pretty short chapter. I'm not going to read it all, but it's a, it's a story about the butler and the, and the uh, uh, baker. Y'all, have y'all read this before? Where both of them uh, are come out of, um, let's see, how does he, how does he term it? Um, so, he, the Pharaoh, of, uh, the, this was a personal uh, baker and, and, and butler to the, to the Pharaoh. And they fell out of a place of favor with him. So that's an illustration of Pharaoh is, is God uh, and Joseph is, is Jesus. And then we all play a part in the rest of it. Okay? So he, he has the butler and the baker both have dreams. Am I losing you? Am I losing anybody? So the baker and the butler both have a dream, and the the 
and they're and it just makes them sad. And I, you can read the whole chapter later, but uh, it, it makes them sad because um, they have the, they have this dream that they didn't understand. Uh, and so uh, they were put in. These two people were put under J Joseph's charge in the prison. Again, he was in there uh, for something he didn't. Jesus was in for something he didn't do. So he gives them. He says uh, in verse. Uh, Seven, why are you looking so down, dejected, and sad today? And they said uh, in verse 8, We have dreamed dreams, and there is no one to interpret them. And Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams, I pray you. So they told him a dream. The chief butler, this is the dream he had. He said, In my dream I saw a, a vine before me, and on the vine were three branches. Then it was as though it... Uh, it budded, the blossoms burst forth, and the clusters of them brought forth ripe grapes almost all at once. Uh, and Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. Then I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Uh, and so Joseph interpreted his dream. He says, uh, it's a th this branch, this is, is going to, the fulfillment of this in three days. Now, how long was Jesus in the grave? Three days. Three days. So after three days, you're going to be released. Uh, and Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position. So after the cross, when Jesus was raised, Colossians, 2, Colossians 3 says, His resurrection was your resurrection too. So we were raised up back into God's favor. God's, uh, you know... Uh, can I say this? Can I be frank again for just a minute today? Can I be frank one more time? Hold, hold your place there. You may not even have the old, old covenant with you today, but uh, go to uh, um, Ro Romans chapter 3. It's down further in the notes, but I need to say this now because it'll, it'll make more sense to you. Romans chapter 3. It's down in that list of verses that's later. Romans chapter 3. This will give it some, uh, some background. Um, starting, verse 19 and 20 declares the purpose that the law was given. It said, It's for two reasons, so that every excuse will be silenced, with no boasting of innocence. So nobody is innocent by keeping the law, right? Mm -hmm. The second one is so that the... So I've, I keep hearing people say that we were never under the law. Um, and we were never in the old covenant, of the Mosaic covenant per se, as you know, we're Gentiles. But the reason the law was given was for both of it, both the Jew and for the Gentile. And he says it right here. So that what the entire world not just the Jews. It was so that the entire world would be, will be held accountable to God's standards. And if you look at the footnote there, um, it be liable to, the, to judgment by God based upon the perfect requirement of the law. You see that? So what he was trying to do is remove all doubt in, in our potential apart from Christ's sacrifice to be righteous enough to, to earn our way into God's... Everybody see that? Nothing... Um, what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Okay. So you all see that. Uh, for by the merit of observing the law, no one earns the status of being declared righteous before God. For it is the law that fully exposes and unmasks the reality of sin. So... Uh, the law was given to take the mask off so we would realize that there's a problem. And there's one, only one solution. And that was the blood of Jesus. And that's when you see that... Uh, uh, what, what he says there, uh, Jesus... When we, we're about to do communion here in a few minutes. But this, this is the first, the first example here is illustrating what the, but, what the butler did. He saw in his, and he saw in his 
uh, is, the, is the, 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 the thief on the cross on his right side that recognized what he was there for. See, he knew, just like this butler, that the, the, the dream was about there's two groups of people involved here. Both of them were in prison. And then you're going to see both of them are going to be released, but, but only one of them comes back into the, to the favor of Pharaoh based upon what you're going to see here. Y'all with me? Am I throwing you a bunch of curves there? Y'all with me okay? Okay. So the cup, uh, and he goes on to say this, uh, um, the cup represents Jesus being, pre the, Jesus being pressed. He was the, he's, the, he's the vine. We're the branches, right? The three branches he saw, he was crushed and his blood was spilled and now the cup that we drink is the communion with his death, right? And that is what we offer to God. David, it's in Psalm 116, verse 13. We'll see, that's in your notes too at the bottom. But David says, what can I offer to God? How can I pay him back for all that he's done for me? Can I pay him back somehow? No. He says, what shall I do? I'm going to lift the cup and give thanks. See? So this is what this cup is representing. Y'all see that? Okay. All right. So dream number two is group, people group number two. Um, and this is the gospel. Believe it or not, the gospel is right here in, 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 in Genesis chapter 40. Uh, this is the interpretation. He said, you're going you're to you're be restored. But he says, hey, don't forget me. Why do we take communion every week? So we don't forget him. Because he was in the prison there and, he got, and, and his eventual release from the prison to the palace was because of his work on our behalf. Amen? Uh, then for... Uh, for uh, so he, he, did, he describes, I was carried away from the land of the Hebrews. So when the chief baker, <laughs> he saw the interpretation was good, he said, Hey, Joseph, I dreamed something too. Behold, I had three cake baskets on my head. And, and if you look at the New King James, they're, they're actually white baskets. So they looked right. They looked good on the outside, like the Pharisees. Uh, and the uppermost basket, there was all kinds of baked food for Pharaoh. But the birds of prey were eating out of the basket on my head. So he says, okay, I don't, this interpretation is not going to be good, but it's true. He said, you know, within three days, Pharaoh will lift you, lift your head and then your life, you'll lose your life because this is representing man's efforts to give something to God that will, will appease him. That he can be appeased, appeased by my baked goods that I'm making for him in my white hat. That's why I, I, I don't, maybe that's why the bakers all have white hats on nowadays. Uh, but, the ba but the baker was trying to, trying to please Pharaoh with what he did. Right? You see that? That is the other group that, and what I want you to see is both groups were raised up into the presence of Pharaoh again. One of them, one of them went, uh, it went into a completion of his favor uh, by giving him the, the cup, which was representing the blood. You ever see that? It's, this, is the, this is an amazing illustration of what Jesus is saying um, in, let's, now let's go back to, uh, uh, John chapter 12 and finished up here. John chapter 12. Tina, the, over, the, over, over verse 44, what does it say? Jesus' last public teaching. If you look at the verse just above that, it says that the Pharisees loved the glory that men could give them rather than the glory that came from God. That was group number two. That was group number two, uh, 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 you know, trying to impress God by the, all their their baking and all their doing. You know, y'all see that? So uh, Jesus shouted. Now look, at the, he this was this was his last public 
teaching, the very last one ever. Uh, so he shouted out passionately. There was passion in his voice here. To believe in me is also to believe in God who sent me. For when you look at me, you're seeing the one who sent me. I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who trust in me will no longer wander in darkness. If you hear my words and refuse to follow them, I do not judge you. Jesus said in John, and he said the same thing to Nicodemus, I didn't come into the, into the world to judge the world, but that the world through me could be saved. Uh, for I, uh, but I, for I have not come to judge you, but to save you. This is he shouting this passionately. If you reject me and refuse to follow my words, which that word is Rama, the the Holy Spirit revealing to you the truth of who I am and what I came to do for you, you already have a judge. The message of truth I have given you will rise up to judge you at the day of judgment. For I am not speaking as someone who is self-appointed, but I speak by the authority of the Father Himself who sent me and who instructed me what to say. Uh, and I know that the Father's commands result in eternal life. Um, and that, that is, that's why I speak the very words that I've heard him speak. Amen? Amen. So, uh, God passed all judgment to the Son, and Jesus died taking our judgment to himself, and now we have the free will to choose whether we will receive, we will receive his judgment on our behalf or whether we'll stand our own and, and present God with how good our life is. And I promise you, I've lived all of my life, and a lot of the church still teaches this, that we can, that, that that's what God is, is, is interested in, is, is how good we've done, whether we've, I mean, we've been taught to eat from the wrong tree. Uh, and that if our good deeds outweigh our bad deeds, then we get, we get the okay. Peter says, oh, the scale is just slightly, you're, that, that was a close one. You're a close one. There's nobody close because the standard of James chapter 2 verse 10 is one mistake, a, a cake it doesn't make, right? Hey, that was, I, that, I just drew that. That's a, that's, that's a Barney Five quote. Uh, you could tell I spent a lot of time listening, watching, and watching Andy Griffith. It's better than TV today anyway. But uh, so... Uh, there's no way to satisfy that position, which is why his, he, his demonstrated love is so important in that regard and for our own heart. You see that? He came to demonstrate it, that it was a requirement. It was not something that he came to do to just make us feel better about our bad stuff. That's what, that's what Gnosticism, that's what a lot of the teachings are going around today, that that there wasn't a need for Jesus to shed his blood. He did it just so that he could make our minds feel better about the, the, the false, falsehood of our separation, that we weren't really separated, we just thought we were. Is that true? No. No, we were separated. <laughs> See, she's prophesying Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through, and that's why I want you to read that after you hear this message today is because we were dead, and then he came to make us alive. So you, you can't be made alive unless you're dead, right? The story of Lazarus was what we were talking about, the illustration of that. Y'all with me? Okay, so this was a passionate last word to the, to the world about what he came to do. And what is, what is the, com the Father's command that he says results in eternal life? Believe in whom he sent. Lift the cup. Lift the cup to me, representing my son's blood. What happens in that moment? We are born again of an incorruptible seed. 
that can never, ever be changed again forever. We become a new creation in Christ. Romans 3.22, those verses at the bottom, um, the entire world will, is held accountable to the standard of the law. That's why He gave it. Not to condemn us, but to show us the only escape. Uh, you know, David, I don't know, I know in a, a lot of, there's a lot of this teaching that goes on about uh, the measure of our goodness as being the indication of our acceptance. In, in, but we're accepted in the beloved, not accepted in how good we live. But I know I grew, I mean, I was around, uh, you know, and no need to name denominations, but where you're really basically taught that your, your goodness is what determines where you go. Uh, heaven or not. Uh, okay, is that what, is that? So, and then Titus 2.11 says, The grace that brings salvation has appeared to most men. Is that what it says? All men. Hey, that's right, Tina's. The grace that brings salvation has appeared to all men. So all men are now, right now, in this world, standing in the presence of God. If you don't believe me, I'm not going to go there, but read 2 Thessalonians 1, 8 and 9. Because it says that the, the ones that refuse to obey the gospel are, are not going to be able, they're going to be uh, removed from the presence of God. They're standing in the presence. So we have the opportunity to share the truth uh, or we can, we can side with the enemy and, and help in the deceptive ploy of getting people to, to not, first of all, not realize that there's a problem and secondly, realize that there's no, you know, that there's no need to do anything uh, because it's, it's already everything. There's no need to respond, in other words. We, there's no response from us necessary. Uh, is that true? Uh, no. The gospel, uh, the, Jesus came uh, to set at liberty the captives. Uh, again, what can I do to offer Psalms 116? What can I do uh, to um, give back for what he's done for me? I lift the cup with thanksgiving. Now, uh, that what, in Isaiah 61, the thing that he, had, he came to do was proclaim acceptance th through him in spite of anything in your life. No matter what your past has been, no matter what your experience has been, or even what it might be to some degree now, your acceptance is based upon His blood and His declaration that now, because of Him, because you have responded and lifted the cup to, to the Father, um, that you're accepted now in the Beloved by His sacrifice. Everybody, everybody with me? Okay. Now, uh, let's go ahead and... and uh, Let's take, let's take communion together. Thank you, sir. So uh, I've got one more question. What makes the gospel good news? It's the work was finished. He did it. The work, the work that we couldn't do, he did. Yeah, it is finished. Uh, and it doesn't. The, the The gospel is good news because, like Deborah was prophesying earlier. It takes the bondage off of us that for all of our lifetime made us afraid of what was going to happen because we couldn't be good enough. That's why it's, the good, it's good news. And, and religion believes that it's, the good, it's good, too good to be true news. But it's true. And Habakkuk said that. And Paul warned him. He said, hey... Uh, He said that, you know, be careful that you're not in that group that thinks that this is too good to be true. Because it is the truth. And he said, he had the boldness to say that the whole world is going to be brought into this place of, of 
judgment based upon my gospel. He said that. And the key I want you to the key I want you to take away from this today is that if he demonstrated his love by what he had to do for the for the father's plan to come to pass to be finished then for us to not to receive it or not to think that it's necessary is I mean I, I mean <laughs> I can't you know as a father I mean you don't you, you don't know that how that could could pass but the key the key to this is that the love is there and he wants us to respond to that love mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm so tired I'm so go ahead oh, I was just thinking as you're discussing all this I was remembering back to the point where the Lord was was drawing me as a young person and I had a lot of questions about about life and about love and, and about God and and so my heart was really open, and I went into a denominational church with someone, and I remember I felt good being there, but they did not give you any response to be made to the gospel the offer of yeah. Jesus as your lamp. They didn't do that, and I walked out the same as I walked in, even though I felt good being there. Maybe one week later, I went into another church where they were preaching the gospel, but they required a response. They said, it's your choice. Will you receive? And, yeah. and I, of course, I had a supernatural encounter with Jesus, but, but I, I, then I responded. Yeah. And my life was completely changed. Yeah. In that, that, I was born again. In that moment, you're, yeah. you're born from, from above. You're, you're no longer of this world, even though you're still in it. You're no longer of it. And that's why Paul said, I, I purpose to, to, to preach nothing among you except Jesus and Him crucified. Because he said the gospel is the power. It's the power. We can teach whatever we want, but if we're, if we're not teaching the truth of the gospel, we're not getting people into, into life, eternal life. Amen? Amen? So Lord, we thank you for the truth. And we thank you that it's forever settled in heaven. And we thank you that you're that your, your son's last word to us is that there's no need for judgment on any of us because we're, all of us are standing in your presence. And so I declare that through the church, your representatives on this earth, that, you, that we are going to make it clear to the world that you're not after them in a bad way. You're after, you are after them in a good way. You demonstrated your love for them. And Lord, help us to convey the message uh, the truth method message to the world instead of accusing them, uh, telling them how much you love them by your demonstration of that love on the cross and how your, your desires for them to give them eternal life and that there's no, that there's no hindrance other than their own decision to receive. And we just thank you, Lord, for your body. We thank you for what you did, what you came into this world to do, that you were the seed that fell into the ground and died. And now it's, you're bringing forth, you're bringing many sons into glory. And we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, just like the, just like the, the dream that Joseph interpreted, we... We lift up the cup, uh, Father. We just lift this cup up because we 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 know that our that nothing but the blood of Jesus can wash away our sins, and we're so thankful that He shed His blood to bring us into this new covenant. And as we lift this cup, we honor His work on our behalf, individually right now in this room and corporately as Your church on the earth. We lift up that finished work. And His blood is our only means of being accepted by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, love y'all. Good to see y'all. Um, I didn't see, I know there's a lot, of, not very many watching. A lot of people are here, but. All right, well, we'll see you. We'll see you next week. Um, I see the congrats on the new home. That's, that's Susan and Wayne. That's congrats on your new house. Uh, thank you, Mary. Love y'all too.
Y'all have a great week. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Susan.